I am born Gambian, but I see myself as an African, and I compete at the African level. I was an employee, today I am an employer. Thirty-three years ago, uh, I started with, you know, conventional construction, building houses for people, and taking contracts. You know, a contract that was within my capacity at the time. You know, starting from nothing. Around uh, the year uh, uh, 2000, I started developing estates, and my my first estate was in Yarambamba, with about 210 housing units. Quite a number of Gambians were looking for affordable and accessible housing, uh, but in a big way that proper estate developed. When I, when I started in the Gambia, I was more or less the only one who was doing it. But then later on, I, I discovered, you know, moving out of the borders of the Gambia. Because, you know, Gambia, if you look at our size compared to other countries in West Africa, it's a very small percentage, you know, which is about two million out of roughly 400 million. So um, uh, what inspired me was to look at now the bigger picture of West Africa, you know, uh, uh, and uh, which led me to, to, to Niger. When I first started, for me, challenges were, yes, like every entrepreneur that starts, finance. Where do you get the money? You know, so that, that was a challenge and we mitigated. We saved and then we grew, you know, gradually. Most entrepreneurs do think that you need the money to get the business done. In my own case, I mean, that wasn't the case. I saved and gradually built up my own finances. Today, my biggest challenge is political continuity. Because I sign up with governments, you know, for, for public-private partnership, and you cannot guarantee that one government will continue from the other. Actively, we're very active in Nigeria, in the Gambia, and now Sierra Leone. So if you are Sierra Leone, and that is in the nine, and our, our vision is to be in every sub-Saharan Africa. With time, you will find a tough house in every African country. And that's, that's a 20-year vision. So um, I don't know whether I'll be still active and rolling to be able to be there myself, but the company is bigger than me. In Gambia and across Africa, we are the best. I'm not saying it because we are, but we have been certified. The latest that we have had recently is the Nigerian uh, Institution of um, uh, Estate Surveyors and Valuers, which is an institution that has been set up in Nigeria for over 50 years. Just, you know, awarded us the best housing developer in Africa and in West Africa. And they gave me a special award. And this only one of, I mean, over the years, we have had, you know, accolades upon accolades on what we have done. There has been cost, cons, consistency in what we're doing. We're doing it because we understand the game. You know, I am a trained builder. So I am not somebody who has seen an opportunity in construction and went into it, no. This my, these are my natural skills, my God-given talents. And then I have been trained to understand construction. So as you can see, for example, you just walked in, I was doing this. This is a project that we're working on. So I get involved in every single detail. And that is why we produce what we produce. You know, people need to hire some experts to do quite a number of this. And these are things that I do myself. And then I bring in experts. So anybody who's buying property, um, you buy property for quite a number of reasons. One of them, a property is an asset. And an asset should appreciate in value. And the way the tough properties appreciate in value, there is no property in Gambia that appreciates like that. For example, in tough city, if you buy there, if you bought there, let's say about a year and a half ago, when we just started, whatever you bought today, it's worth one and a half times the value. And some haven't even moved in. And this has been happening over time, over the past three, almost three decades that anybody who's bought a property, you know, if you want to sell, resell because it's an investment, you get good money. If you want to rent, you get good returns. And then if you want to live in it, it's convenient. 
So anybody who wants to buy, there's no better place to buy a property than, than Ruta. That is a brand. So in real estate, in affordable housing, we can probably say that we are the biggest. In the whole of the continent, because there is no developer that is trying to build a million homes in Africa alone. I have been to 36 African countries. I have traveled the world all over. I have had inspiration from individuals, like everybody knows that Nelson Mandela, for me, is an inspiration to me. And then that I keep saying that every African should look up to this man. My vision comes from Dubai. Dubai almost is the center of the world for investments and real estate and so many things from a business point of view. And this is where you have convergence of Africans, Americans, Europeans, people from the Far East, Chinese, everyone is getting there. So Dubai came in in the 70s, you know, in the desert, where at times it can be 15 degrees hot. And now they've turned it into a paradise. So there's something they're doing right. Well, that's where I got my inspiration. You know, I used to do some business in Dubai, you know, and I thought, wow, if these Arabs can do it, these Emiratis, you know, under these conditions, why can't we do it in Africa? So one thing that I do, like what the Dubai visionaries do, is always to break your own um, records. So you don't wait for somebody to come close to you before you try to leap up again. If you notice all our development, we start doing something. By the time the competition starts copying what we're doing, we move on. Because con con constantly we are trying to be innovative. And that's what it takes to be a good entrepreneur. We need to be innovative. All of us, we travel outside of Africa. We go to America, we go to Europe, we go to the Far East, and we admire these places. So really the challenge for me is that why not Africa? And that is the inspiration and the challenge why we are putting up Tafsir. We do hear some comments about the size of our houses, but it's not on purpose because it's affordability. If we can save any square millimeter in our houses, we do because it makes a difference. If you look at the population of the Gambia, two million plus, we are living in a very tight space of 11,500 square kilometers. We are densely populated. We are about number five, six, or seven in the whole of Africa. So we'll be forced into changing the way we live because we don't have the space. So um, uh, the future of this country is on those who understand this and also build smart. So yes, we are selling. Actually, when we first launched the project, you know, within a year, we sold more than what was targeted. And today, if you go to Tough City, people are living there and our clients are happy. These are the ones who are most important to us. You know, when we don't do very well as Africans, we don't do research. Whatever we're doing, we do research very well. We know where our clients are. We know who they are. We know their budget. We know what they want. I was in, in the tourism industry. I used to own a hotel, it used to be called uh, Taft Bell. And it was in partnership with a friend of mine, a Lebanese called Charbel, Charbel uh, El Hajj. And that's why it was called Taft Bell. And we built this in 1995. It was a 100 room hotel, uh, but we, we sold some time after, after that. But now I only concentrate on real estate development. Because trying to build a million homes is not easy. You know, so uh, I put all my strength in, in real estate and housing development. There are some contractors in this country today. They started as interns with us. There's one philosophy that I have with my staff. I love building up my staff to be on their own. That's the only way that you can spread you know, prosperity in any country in the world. So one of the things that I never do is to keep my staff. Anybody who wants to go private, I will support you to stand on your own.
I thought that one of the things that I wanted to do in real estate development is leaving a legacy. It is something that I want to that I want to be remembered for. My heart is with the youth because they're the future. Not only the future, but even now. So I believe that I need to be closer to the youth folks. And that is why I set up my foundation. And in my foundation, I have, I have about seven or eight initiatives. One, through the TAF conference, which has been done for five good years. So it started a long time ago. We are planning one for December for the sixth one. Basically what we try to do is to have a conference where you have young Africans, young Gambians who are coming together and then generally having a discussion about national issues, national matters. How can this country move forward? You know, in a very progressive manner. So we choose the themes, we bring some inspirational speakers and a good networking platform. But our hope is it's advocacy. You know, for we are now on the 84th uh, episode. We also have the tough startups. To, in order to encourage the young ones, I mean, we have some seed capital that we give up as grants. It's not an investment on them to have a stake in what they're doing. Uh, we give away something like about, I think about almost $50,000 every year. And the star price is $20,000. You know, uh, so the winner gets it very competitive. The second prize is $10,000. The third prize is $5,000. And then there are consolation prizes. So we do it to encourage, you know, registered entrepreneurs who are having challenges in financing. And uh, we think that we want to be part of their, their journey by putting out this money to them, helping them to build up. We have the Disability Trust Fund, where those who are disabled, we help them with some, some little bit of money. Uh, the Tough Leadership Academy, we have it also, where today we've trained over 500 young Gambians you know, with the key values of leadership. Because for me, um, in this world today, the biggest challenge, one of the biggest challenges is leadership. You know, not only at the political level, but at every level. I have noticed that in Gambia, the women today are more productive. And I will boldly say this. You know, if you want somebody reliable that you can trust, give it to a lady. That's the reality. And this is out of experience. Uh, so uh, my fellow men should, you know, jack up a little bit. Um, uh, but what I've found out is that um, uh, you can trust them better. They are more reliable. And we all know that this is a reality. We have quite a number of our young men who's left this country. And this is going to have some serious social impacts. Quite a number of young Gambians, young Gambian male, have left in an age, at a very important age, probably between the age of 18 and 30. So um, we're running short on workers. Everybody who's into anything skillful will tell them they cannot find workers anymore. So rather than complaining, I look back to the women folks, and they've been performing very well. So uh, we employ them, we train them, and the same goes in uh, in uh, in Wolof. Ne nyari loho moi 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 taka tuwe nyari loho moi taka malan. You know, so uh, and it has been proven in Taf City uh, that um, the women are very well trusted, well very well inspired and motivated, and they are performing. Somebody, somebody told me that I should retire. So I asked him, but if I retire, what should I do? He said, well, you should find a passion. I said, but my passion is work. Always, I'm always trying to discover something. I have a very inquisitive mind. So one of the things that I enjoy like, is my phone. Like yesterday, I was on the beach. I go on my, my beach, beach work. You know, every, every day I have to clock a minimum of 12,000 steps. So I monitor my steps also on the beach based on the tide. You know, when it's low tide, it's nice to work. So yesterday I turned, I was walking by sedimentary. My eyes are like an aperture. You know, I'm into photography also. So I just saw these beautiful palm trees all clustered together. So I stopped and took up, and the sky was so blue. And they were so tall because they were up on the hill. It was a bit hilly there. 
So I just took a picture of the, of the palm trees and then did a giveaway immediately on, on Twitter. A thousand dollars in giveaway. Say, guess where this place is? You know, so this is how I react to things. I'm very spontaneous in my decisions and the things I do. But because naturally, that's who I am. I mean, I have been weird to be like that. At times people think that I, I plan certain things before I do it, but it doesn't happen, especially today in the day of media and um, trying to reach out to the world. So most of the things that I do, it's, it's very spontaneous. So I would advise the young ones to get into the business like any other business, that these are great opportunities because there's a demand, but take time to understand the business. Like anything that you do in life, if you are into cinematography or videography, whatever, don't just grab a camera because you see somebody with it. Try to do your research, you know, and that's one thing I would advise all these young ones. Today, you have the world in your fingertips, you know, with my uncle, Uncle Google. So you type now one word, boom, 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 cinematography, and then you will have so many things to learn from. Same is the real estate. So take time to understand whatever you are interested in. And if you understand it, do the right thing, then implement, and then the result will be success. I always want to encourage the young ones um, uh, with the good values of, of business and, and life. And um, uh, there's quite a number of values that you need to have to be successful. But two things that I've always kept in my life is work hard and be honest. These are the two formulas to success. So anybody who thinks that you can pull a fast one to be successful, you're making the greatest mistake in your life. Life is about working hard and honesty. And if you do so, with some little bit of luck, you should be successful.